Hello, uh, I'm calling about John Baca. Yes, sir. How are you doing? What's your name? Uh, Ricky Monday. I prefer to use uh, Monday if that's okay with you. So Ricky is the actual first name Monday. Alias. Yes, yes it is. Okay. Um, so what do you got for me? All right, man. Um, on the morning of May fourth at about two thirty a.m. <laughs> Talk about their, their narcotics yeah. That morning on May 4th, we heard a radio transmission come over the radio from Inglewood. It said, Come to an any unit office there, narcotics office, code one, the alarm is going off. Okay, so um, so we heard this transmission. It was, it was there was an alarm going off, and there was some confusion as as they were trying to um, turn off the alarm, and uh, they made it clear that, that there was um, what they called a narcotics office, and and the alarm was going off in that office, and um, they only it took probably less than a minute or so. They had the alarm shut down, and we didn't think a whole lot about it but but we um we knew the date it was may 4th how how did we recall that it happened on yeah yeah Be because there's another there's another uh, high profile there's actually a couple other high profile incidents in in you know in our minds there it wasn't the type of thing that deputy like, Kano, you know, with, we went and recorded deputy yeah, Kano after we heard that call we, there was other things going on that that night that caused us to know specifically what that date was. On May 4th, 2020, Christopher Bailey uh, was nearly killed by the sheriff department in the city of Inglewood. Oh, this is also, this was the same exact spot again, only it's May 4th, uh, 2021. It's the one year anniversary where they beat uh, Christopher Bailey. Only on this day, um, we got there before they could, before they even got him out of the car, right? About that time, right after. Yeah, and then when we started confronting them about kicking uh, Bailey's eye sockets and breaking all the bones in his face and stuff, um, they they just drove. They took a rookie officer to drive his car, and they just all drove away with the vehicle. You know, instead of normally if they're going to make an arrest, they tow a vehicle, but suddenly it was uh, so urgent that they leave there immediately that they actually drove drove it away themselves. Let's cut to the video, Rick. I brought up the, the radio transmission on that day. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's the whole reason we're discussing this. And, is, I, and you said that it was irrelevant well, to, to what was going on at that time. It, it, the, the transmission was hugely relevant when we heard it at the house, I think. Because I think we were just both shocked like because we've never heard that. Never once have we ever heard anything, not, not before then. And still, we've never heard that an alarm going off in the narcotics office at 2.30 in the morning. Um, I wouldn't have even known they had an alarm. It makes perfect but sense. I would even do. if that were to happen by mistake or whatever, maybe it comes on the radio, maybe it doesn't. But this time, it happened when and we they, heard they were, it. They were told. They were told to call. They were told to call communications. Yes, but this guy, Baca, not only did he steal a kilo of cocaine, and it actually wasn't him. There was a sergeant and some other officers. I think Baca was at home asleep. He made the phone call to get the kilo of cocaine. These guys stole it. It, and which, hey, that's not a problem. David uh, Salcedo, he's the uh, lieutenant and head of the narcotics uh, division. Is it a division, a department? What is it called? I don't know. Just narcotics, England yeah. narcotics. Um, they're paying a half a million dollars a year to David, David Salcedo, and apparently he didn't think it was relevant 
enough to do anything about it, or maybe he's in on it, I don't know. Um, he did make a quarter of a million dollars in other pay on one of his recent years. Besides, um, besides his half a million a year from Inglewood, he also was the chief of Baldwin Park uh, Police Department for 49 days. I don't know what his salary was, but he, when he left there, he also sued them and he won uh, $4.9 million. That's $100 per day. Hundred thousand? Did I say hundred? A hundred. A hundred thousand. A hundred thousand dollars a day. A hundred thousand dollars per day for the forty-nine days he worked there. On top of his half a million he makes, at Inglewood is a, you know running the narcotics division, each year. And on top of whatever cocaine, I don't know how, um, Baca and Salcido and the mayor. I don't know how they split up their drugs or their proceeds from it, but um, I do know the mayor. Uh, uh, he doesn't like to talk about the subject. If you look at the two ur urban girls, they're the only people that came close to running a story on this topic. And if you read the comments, Mayor Butts is in every other comment talking about he's going to sue them for slander, for libel, when it's obvious. There's, I mean, how are we going to hurt his reputation? It doesn't matter how many women he rapes or sexually assaults that work for the city of Inglewood. Um, or do I have to say allegedly or I'm going to get sued for defamation? I, I think you should say allegedly. I mean, because... Uh, Jackie Lacey failed to prosecute those charges as well against the it, mayor, he, uh, he was also in trouble um, with the public integrity the public integrity division of the district attorney's office which best I could tell they've never ever prosecuted anybody they always pretend that they're doing independent investigation they never do anything but in the case of uh, Mayor Butts they claim to have lost the file on this um, corruption case where the mayor gave the trash contract to the highest bidder instead of the lowest bidder in exchange for his unemployed brother getting a job. In the highest bid on the contract. The co in case you didn't know, the contract is supposed to go to the lowest bidder. You're supposed to save taxpayers money if you can, be frugal. But instead, Mayor Butts gave it to the highest bidder. And I forget the numbers, so don't quote me on this, but it was like either 10 million or 100 million. Must have been 10 million higher than the next highest bid, something like that. Uh, let's give them the benefit of it out and just say it's a hundred uh, uh, or one million. It was, it was even, even if it was one million over the highest it, bid. It was one dollar. One dollar is great enough. But it was millions of dollars he robbed the taxpayers for again. Also, there's the a SoFi Stadium. He acquired part of the land from, from the forum, the Los Angeles Forum, under false pretenses. He didn't, you know, he lied and said, I forget what it was supposed to be. He said it was supposed to be some kind of video arcade thing. And the reality is he was giving it to um, what is eventually what is now the um, the forum's competitors to a competing venue only directly across the street. He gave this land to them to build the SoFi Stadium. So of course he got the city sued over that. The city of Inglewood has seen many lawsuits over the years costing taxpayers millions of dollars as a consequence to the corruption of their city officials. It is unfair that the citizen taxpayers have to foot the bill for the unlawful criminal conduct of the city of Inglewood's elected officials. Some of them officials are not even elected, like John Baca. Baca has been employed by the IPD since 2000 as a task force officer on drug investigations. He is also the vice president of the Inglewood Police Association, the union for Inglewood police officers. He was hired as a peace officer despite his violent criminal record. In 1996, he was convicted of assault and battery and sentenced to one year probation. In 2008, he was one of the eight officers involved in the shooting death of 56 year old Eddie Felix Franco. Officer fired at Franco 47 times, striking a male bystander in the head, leaving a nearby wall riddled with at least 13 bullet holes and blood. Any reasonable person with critical thinking skills can easily see that John Baca and David Ramirez knew each other. Ironically, David Ramirez is the Inglewood cop that terminated a live stream video that was being broadcasted live on YouTube. His actions in several events can be compared to the type of behavior you would expect from a thug or a gangster or a drug dealer. Especially when 
Daniel encounters David Ramirez a second time, and David Ramirez knocks Daniel's camera out of Daniel's hand. That isn't the kind of behavior one would expect from a trustee member of the police union advisory boards. John Abel Baca, arrested by the FBI, works for the Inglewood Police Department, stealing cocaine out the narcotics evidence room. Don't worry, I provided that radio transmission to the FBI. You ain't got nothing proud of. You need to wipe that shit off the side of your car. The difference by selling cocaine, you guys better get the last of the coke out of the locker quick. FBI's on the way. I already told him about it. There's still five of them floating around. We know 